Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this day eight of the 12 days of brilliance. And you know what? It is snowing outside. And so for tonight, we thought we would bring the snow inside for this Snowtomation video. You may remember all the way back on day one of the 12 Days of Brilliance, we set out to talk about how to design our very own do-it-yourself snow globe. We went to the home decor store and we found this glass dome. We put it over and we put a fan in it. If you don't remember, just here, watch this video down there. Anyway, we fired up the fan and we waited for the snow and no snow, it didn't move anywhere. And I am very thankful to Mr. Hallahan's group out of Miramichi Valley High School, and they did answer why the fan did not work. And I'm not gonna tell you why, but it's very sciencey, it's very geeky, and it's very brilliant if you have an answer for it. So shoot us an email if you know why day one's video did not work. So as soon as we realized that our original design was going to work, and let me tell you, I say as soon as we realized, it wasn't very soon. We went through the design, evaluate, and refine stage of the design process over and over and over again until I was very frustrated, but then we had a breakthrough. What if we could mimic Mother Nature herself and design an apparatus that would allow the snow to fall from the sky above. And that's what we set out to do. We're gonna talk about the process right now. And Hummingbird connected and we're back. All right, around the Brilliant Lab, we have many different robotic platforms or automation platforms. Really what we're looking for is an electronic platform that can be coded by a piece of computer software to do what we wanted to do. So. We went back to our old faithful, the Hummingbird Kit. If you haven't checked out the Hummingbird Kit before, take a look at their manufacturer's website by following the link below. The Hummingbird Kit is an Arduino-based robotic experimentation platform and it has room to grow for beginners. One of the benefits of the Hummingbird Kit is the fact that it comes with various different levels of software engagement from the most beginner level to the advanced level, and somewhere in between there is a version of Scratch that allows students to program in a very familiar format, and it'll speak directly to the Hummingbird robotic platform. And that's what we're going to use to program the release of snow. Inside the Hummingbird kit, you're gonna find all kinds, whoa, of goodies. The Hummingbird kit comes stocked with inputs as well as outputs, sensors as well as motors, rotary knobs, as well as, well, all kinds of stuff. So I really encourage you to check out this kit, and if you have one at your school, break it out. It really allows your imagination to run wild with the components included in the kit. This is the snow release mechanism that you saw a moment ago. We're not gonna go into all the design modifications that we made to this, but I am gonna give you a hint what we found to use on Thingiverse.com. This is actually an automated aquarium feeder that someone designed to remotely feed their fish using an Arduino-based platform. We simply downloaded the thing off of Thingiverse, and we'll throw the link up here, made some modifications so that it would fit inside our snow globe using these clamps that we also found on Thingiverse and another thing. So you never know what you're going to find for inspiration. You just need to have a design in mind, go looking, do some research, and modify the components to make it work for your project. We mentioned a moment ago that there are all kinds of components in the Hummingbird Kit, and a servo is one of the ones that we're going to use for this project. If you haven't heard of a servo before, it's like a kind of motor. Now the servo that we're using is not a fully rotational servo. A motor can turn 360 degrees, a complete revolution. And there are some servos that can do that. These servos in the Hummingbird Kit can only turn starting from zero and up to 180 degrees. But what we love about them is a servo motor is very precise. The reason why we use the servo in this project is we need a very precise way to turn at certain degree intervals so that this automatic fish feeder can release the snow 
from the compartments within the design. So this servo is hooked up with zip ties and a little bit of glue. So we really hope that the servo does the trick. It's pretty easy to hook it up to the Hummingbird kit. There are three wires, negative, positive, and one for the signal. And luckily the Hummingbird kit does a great job at laying out those pins. And you can see that it already has power. The Hummingbird kit is tethered to my computer via USB and to a power supply via a five volt power adapter. Now it's time to do some coding. I'm gonna bring up our little picture in picture here and you can follow along. I'm gonna write a very simple code to allow me to switch from button to button and it'll correspond to the position of the servo. So we'll start out without releasing any snow. We will move 30 degrees, release snow, move 30 degrees, release snow. I know it's not going to be like a true snowstorm. There's not going to be this consistent flow of snow but we have to work sometimes within the means of the electronics that we have. Let's get started. Follow along with the manufacturer's instructions and you can see that once you launch the server program, it'll give you two options here. And we're gonna use Scratch and it opens up Scratch in the same format as what we expect. The only difference in this Scratch interface is that they have added a category, more blocks. And when you click on that, you can see two things. One, a little green dot that shows that the Hummingbird kit is indeed connected. And then a variety of black blocks that are the commands that you can send to the Hummingbird kit. But what's great is you can integrate sprite commands, event codes, and even logic codes into all of the Hummingbird kit commands. We're not going to get that far today. We're just going to set up five key press event based commands just like you would in Scratch to control the servo. So here we are. I'm going to grab one, two, three, four, five key presses and I'm going to change them to actually correspond to one when number two is pressed, when number three is pressed, when number four is pressed, and then of course when number five is pressed. And so that's going to correspond to our position zero through 180 degrees. All right. Now clicking down on more blocks, I'm going to go down and grab the Hummingbird Kit Servo, and I'm gonna to check to make sure that I plugged it in port one. Yes, I did. And what is the starting angle? I'm going to start it at zero because remember, a servo only turns from zero to 180 degrees. And then just like I did with the key press, I am going to duplicate that over and over down to my five key press commands. I'm just gonna test it to make sure that it's working and it is, it just turned back. And so that was what happened when I pressed one. It went back to starting point zero. And now at two, we're going to turn in 45 degree increments. So when I press two, turn to angle 45. When I press three, turn to angle 90. When I press four, turn to angle 135. And when I press five, turn to angle 180. You ready to give it a shot? One, we're already at zero, two, three, four, and five. That is going to create a heavy snowfall. All right, so let's bring this back to the home position, fill it up with some snow, and do a trial run. It's all right to be messy, by the way. Maybe I shouldn't have wasted all of that snow at the beginning. Here we go. Two, three, four, five. It works. Time to install it into our Snowdomatic festive holiday snow globe of brilliance. I think we're ready to install our Snowdomatic feeder machine into our snow globe. And it's going to take a little bit of precision handiwork to get this steady without spilling any of the snow into the snow globe. 
Luckily, the Hummingbird kit also comes with servo extension cables that will come in very handy. Let's get started. Whew, that was tricky work, but we have it held in place. With those little clamps, we're just using friction to hold it into place. All right, I did hear the servo start up, so it is ready for the automation. We are ready for the piece de resistance, ça c'est français, for wow, a whole bunch of brilliance is about to happen. We're ready to release the first segment of snow. Now what's really fun is remember way back when we taught you how to use the makey makey? What if you didn't press a button on your keyboard to release the snow, but you pressed, I don't know, anything conductive, a watermelon, a cantaloupe, wow, two melons in one example, but you know how a makey makey works. Add your own interactivity to an automation project and you'll add an extra dimension to an already brilliant user interface. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Whoa! <laughs> Not a lot happened. Let's go one more. Wow, I'm running out of snow. It's all over the floor, but there we have it. Success. We have made an automatic snow globe of brilliance. One more time, in slow motion. Thank you very much for joining in on this edition of the 12 Days of Brilliance. Brilliant Labs in honor of the holiday season and this web series, we are issuing a challenge to all of our viewers. If you click on the link below, you will be taken to a form that you can fill out and upon submission, Brilliant Labs will review it and then some of our lucky viewers will receive Brilliant Labs support in the new year to complete your project. Check back tomorrow and best of luck with your Hour of Code initiatives this week. Thank you for tuning in to the 12 Days of Brilliance.